This is John Tuttle. I'm back again, and uh, I just did a video on making uh, darts for blow guns out of uh, thistles. The thistles would be the uh, the wrap around in the dart, dart, like cotton. Uh, here, here, I'll show you a picture. I just finished the YouTube. This here. Now, the other day, I was able to come back down here for the first time in months, and I thinned some stuff out. Uh, this is a piece I knocked off the video I did a couple weeks ago at Georgetown, one of the spots I showing how to thin using a heavy hammer. And uh, what we're gonna do today is take them and here's one I already started with that I did out of kick cut and show you how to go ahead and finish it. And uh, getting away from that, now I'm using what I call the hollow buffer, which is my favorite tool to use out there. But I like to save it for finished work because when I'm hitting on big stuff, I got some, some over here that's probably that big around, but it wears them out so bad right here. And uh, But on the smaller stuff, they don't wear out that fast. And uh, they're very inexpensive to make. Uh, Eddie Main. Got videos on making them. He's the one to come up with an idea, not me. Now what I'm gonna do here is try to drive this straight across here and I'm gonna hit almost straight into it. Also, I want y'all to realize that I've only napped probably an hour and 30 minutes for four months. And that was on the video I showed. The first one on thinning it down using a heavier billet. You know, I broke that piece of Georgetown in half because my accuracy was off big time. I hit way up above the center line on my platform. But anyway, so we're gonna go kind of easy with this. And I put it here where it hit more straight into it. Like that. This side looks pretty good. We come over here and work on this side, so. Yeah. I'm probably gonna break it. Well, I'm more than rusty. I'm telling you. I used to do carpentry work back in the 70s. We didn't have air guns and stuff like that. We had those hammers and 16 penny nail and uh i could be driving a six penny nail in a two before and uh i would put it there and hit it one time get it started and then let go of it and with two or three blows i had it all the way in the two before like wham 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 I get it started wham 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 but if i got sick went on vacation even for a week never been a nail when I come back, I'd get it started and wham, and that nail bend, I'd hit it off the side. I would bend so many of them, it would take hours before my muscle memory got back or my accuracy got back. And that's what's happening here. I haven't done this in so long. I'm having real trouble hitting exactly where I want to hit. If you're a flint knife, you know that's extremely important. Try to run one across here. There we go. One there, a little bitty one there. These are just little short ones, I'll knock it off here. Okay, that's starting to get pretty thin. And we got this side done all except for pressure flaking. Now, I'm not gonna be able to get these extremely thin because I can't pressure flake. I'm not strong enough. And when I try, I'll be hurting the night straining those muscles. I'll be feeling it tonight. I won't be able to sleep. I'm starting to get my arms built up. Uh, my regular doctor told me that the, that the, uh, the, radio, the, the rheumatoid, rheumatologist, I can't get it right, the doctor for arthritis, rheumatologist. When I see her Monday, 
See, I broke that point off. It's too high up. Exactly what I'm talking about. If she would probably get me started on physical therapy. He wasn't sure if I'd start getting my strength back because I haven't done anything in four months. Except lay in bed or sit in the chair and watch TV. I couldn't even walk hardly. And I'm real weak from all that. I don't know. This is all something new to me. If you've experienced it before, you got my sympathy. I definitely can feel you. Feel for you. All right now then. You need to come across here and clean some of this up. Show you what we're doing. Come across here and take this hand out. Woo! That took too pretty much out. That to end it real quick. <laughs> now I gotta be careful it don't break on me. They do the same thing down here, but I'm afraid it's gonna break because I got it too thin up here. I'm be real careful. I ain't gonna start on the point. Right now, as rusty as I am, I don't like doing that because I'm probably going to miss. It's lighter. That's what I figured. I missed the platform and everything. Really screwed everything up right there. I'm doing this way. I was so worried about it. I'm sitting there shaking and He's going there which way worried about missing my uh my platform and breaking it. Getting too high up on it, I may not missing it. I was hoping I wouldn't miss it. I was worried about hitting too high up on it. All right, I'm gonna try right here. Got it out. That did good. I'm gonna hold it here and I can, I, can, I, can, I can put pressure holding it like this enough, probably so it won't break. Uh, I'm hoping y'all were able to see that. I'm horrible about video. I'm, I'm too too focused on what I'm trying to do and I don't look up to make sure we got it on the, the screen. My old friends come to see me the other day and he knew I'd been down. He got talking about something we did when we were teenagers. It was real funny. And I got a kid almost in some serious trouble doing it because his daddy was a lawyer and his daddy called him and, and uh, he's afraid they'd get in a lawsuit. But uh, we killed a big old rattlesnake one time. He was almost six foot long. Big old uh, cane break or timber rattler, some people call them timber rattler, some people call them cane break, and stuff like that. And uh, we took a rod and reel and tied him on a, about a 25, about a 20 pound fishing line and curled him up in the middle of the road and got all off in the weeds on the side of the road in the bushes and we hid. And when cars would come along, we'd pull them across the road. and. Uh, we didn't uh, think nothing about it. That's the funniest thing you ever see. We had one wall was stopped with two women, and they done squashed him flat, guts was hanging out of him. And they got out, and they were like 20 yards ahead when they got out. They wouldn't get nowhere near close. And they were talking about they done killed him. And we made him move, and they went to screaming and jumped back in that car. He ain't dead, he ain't dead, he ain't dead. Hit him again, hit him again. And she squealed them tires and backed over him. 
This time he was as flat as a postage stamp. <laughs> and they got out, we made him move again. She went to scream, Lord, but he ain't dead, he ain't dead, hit him again. <laughs> Run on him again. So I told this lawyer's boy about it, probably when I was about 50, 50 years old at the hunting camp. So he tries it and he causes a wreck. <laughs> and uh, fortunately they didn't catch him. He ran and they didn't know who done it. They found the string tied and he left the rod and reel and everything, but he wasn't close to his house. They never knew who done it. But he told his daddy because he was scared to go get caught. And poor honey, his daddy was not happy with me. <laughs> but putting that idea in that kid's mind. You won't have some fun. <laughs> Be careful you don't cause no wreck. I don't care how many flies is on him. I don't care how flat he is. If you make him move, they're going to back up and run over him again. <laughs> they're going to keep running over it. I just had a piece of go in my eye, and I got glasses on. Boy, it's hurting. It fell out, but it's really got my eyeballs water. I'm going to quit on this one and save it for indirect, because my eyes are water right now. All right, we're going to do one more, and then we'll switch over to indirect. I hadn't done that in a long time either about four months. Let's try this uh, piece right here. It's almost naturally thin, see that? We'll see how thin we can get it doing percussion work without doing indirect. And then we'll follow it up and finish it up with indirect. I can get it thin enough, we don't need to. It's thin enough right now to make anything out of it. I just like to see how thin I make stuff. Okay, I'm gonna... I think that's good enough. They started to uh, tilt that hammer, that camera <laughs> hammer. I think it's say. Might need a small hammer or billet, but anyway, I started to tilt the camera. Supposed to have talking about being rusty and breaking stuff. I hit way above that platform. See how thick that is? That shouldn't have broke. I hit way, way up here. Now I got to try to get rid of that square edge. There we go. There we go. Tonight I'm getting real weak and shaky. My legs are starting to kind of quiver on me a little bit. My right one is. I got that is my toe up all the way on my toe. My whole leg shaking. All right. This is real smooth. I'm gonna try to run this all the way across there. Went halfway. That's due to my accuracy was all. If I had a hit the first time right, like I should have had, the way I had it set up, it would have went probably all the way across. But because I hit too low, it didn't. That one went right to there. Look how much higher. I almost hit too high on it. I did. If it hadn't been thin, it would have broke hitting that high up.
propel from there. Still working on this base kind of set it where I broke it. There we go. Broke it all. Keep going. Still make pretty good points. Man, I was way off on my blow there. I probably hit a quarter of an inch high. <laughs> hit perfect on those two. You couldn't have wanted to hit them any better. Try to run this one at least halfway. Nope. Did not get it. Trying to round this off and get it uniform again where I broke the That's what I'm talking about. Show you what I hit. Hit right up on top right there. Instead of hitting that edge like that. So much for that one. I'm doing all kid cut. Let's uh, do a piece of Georgetown and see what we can do with it. Get me some water and take a little break here. Yeah. Anyway, the plan that comes to see me, uh, not that one, I'm sorry. Another friend of mine I saw at church uh, when I was able to go this past Sunday. I hadn't been going in a while. Uh, also reminded me of the time that, uh, that we almost lost our lives. And uh, I think about that time an awful lot because I should be dead. I shouldn't be here. We went duck hunting in the backwaters of the Mississippi River. Mississippi River was out of its banks and flooded about a couple thousand acres of what was soybean fields. Wasn't nothing planted it because in the wintertime it just plowed, there's a lot of grass that grew up in it. So it flooded, it flooded these soybean fields. And the water out there was anywhere from four to three foot deep. And the ducks would come in and I don't know why they light out in them shallow fields, but they did. I've I, I never been a great big duck hunter, so I don't know why they do that, but we, we duck hunting. But the problem is, we put the boat in a creek that's probably 20 foot deep. And this was a creek that dries up. It's just a gully. I shouldn't have called it a creek. It was just a big gully. It's right by a church, an old black church shotgun type church and where it was at 
when you put your boat in it behind that church, and it's deep enough you can go down it into the main creek about a quarter of a mile. And that was called Coles Creek, C-O-L-E-S. And it probably was 80 foot deep because trees on the bank that were 100 foot tall wasn't just a little bit of the tops of them sticking out. So we go this way and it tees into Coles Creek. We take a right and go up Coles Creek for a long way. And then we go through the woods a long way and come out in this old bean field. Now to get back to our truck, we gotta go through them woods where we duck up and gotta find a way back to that creek. And then go down this long way, probably a quarter of a mile, half a mile, and uh, get in a little dried up branch of gully that's in front of that church. And then we go straight to our, to our truck. We hunted out there in the dark. And uh, we hunted until the legalizer was over with. By the time we picked up all of our ducks, we had them scattered everywhere. And, and the motor wouldn't start, and we flew with it for 30 minutes. And we got dark, and we got the motor running. The old boy flooded it. So we had a battery in there with light on it, and I'm operating the light up front, shining the trees and the pathway for him to go. And we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we never hit the creek. And it was sleeping. It was like 28 degrees and it started sleeping real hard. And uh, we think we realized we'd overshot it. We crossed it, probably didn't know it, or we just went on an angle and missed it completely. So we decided to turn around and go back the way we were going for a little while, and just as we turned around, the battery went dead. Now we don't have any lights. And I, gosh, I knew it was in trouble. I was so cold, I was shaking. I got wet picking them ducks up, got water over my waders and things like that. Had nothing, nothing to be able to with anything. We, we probably four or five miles out in the woods from the nearest river and water, deep water. So we just kept going and going and we'd find a big tree and we'd try to go straight and we'd skylight it. And uh, it was light enough you could see the tops of the trees and try and find that creek and we couldn't find it. And after about two hours of going around in circles, I'm sure, we started to panic. We were getting hypothermia. And both of you we fish and dive, we're gonna get hypothermic, please, dear. If we couldn't find dry land and we couldn't stay in that boat. And I got to thinking, well, if we can get that gas cast and pour some gas in the middle of that aluminum boat and, and find a way of, of lighting it. I said maybe we can get a spark off the battery or something. And neither one of us had a lighter of any kind or a match or nothing. I learned a lesson from that too, you don't go off the nothing to start a fire with in cases like emergency. So anyway, I'm gonna stop and rest a few minutes and tell this story. I got an idea. I said the next big tree we come to, it's got limbs even with the water. I'm gonna climb to the top of that tree and see if I can see anything. We come to this tree, I probably climbed 20 foot up it. I mean, I was at the top of the tree, was probably realistically 70 to 80 foot high. And uh, now I'm gonna back off on that. I, that was that was that was near the near the creek where it's that deep. We, we more to the wood. It probably was 30 foot deep. The creek was, and I climbed the tree about 20 foot. And I looked, and when I turned and looked, I saw the light, and it was the light the security light on the light pole in front of that old black church. And, it, and, and I could see that if we could get in that field, the water was about two foot deep, but we could run a motor and we could go straight to that light. And I went to screaming, I literally went to screaming, I see a light, I see a light, to my friend Jackie. And I'd climb down that boat and I said, go this way. And I'd take him to a tree, and I'd take him to a tree, I'd take him to a tree, and I'd, and I'd climb another one. Because I didn't want to make sure it was dark. 
That's all right, we're going right, and all of a sudden we hit open water, and we knew we was in a, in a cornfield there. It wasn't but two or three feet deep where corn was planted, about a thousand acres of corn. And, and across that field was that light, and the cornfield went right up to that gully where the church was and our car was. So we was able to take the boat and go all the way straight, straight to our truck. We was able to, it was deep enough, the, the water in the gully was out in the cornfield, and we were so cold, and it was about 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And uh, I think my wife had already called the sheriff's department or his, or his hat, I don't know. But we'd been out there going around in circles so I come up with that idea. And uh, we got in the truck and we turned the heater on and I never been that cold before and when I went to thaw it out. Any of y'all that's been extremely cold and you thaw out is real painful. We were almost crying, our feet were hurting so bad in our hands. And about six months after that, somebody come out with a song. It's called Thank God for the Lighthouse, I think, or maybe just a lighthouse. I don't remember. But they was talking about seeing the lighthouse. And man, that's my favorite song to this day. I haven't heard it in a long time, but the lighthouse is my favorite song. God saved our lives that night. He had a special purpose for both of us. This day, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll be 77 in May in a couple of weeks. And, I don't know what that purpose is, but, but he had one, I promise you. But uh, anyway, I rested up some, and I'm going to try to run a few more off of this, and uh, then we'll probably do some uh, indirect indirect percussion tomorrow if I feel like it, do a little short video on this. And uh, I cut out there yesterday and didn't do a video, and uh, my battery was almost dead, and I didn't realize I forgot to charge it now, that night before. They didn't have a, like, 10% battery. I was going to do a video, and when I got my phone out, and I looked, they had 10% battery, and I said, well, that ain't going to work. But I, but I did play and do some napping a little bit and some preform making and stuff like that. And I uh, spent 45 minutes down here. I timed it. I've done exactly 45 minutes. It took me an hour to, to kind of get over when I got back to the house to rest up. Somebody says that every day that you're uh, in the hospital or, 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 or don't exercise but like in bed or in a chair, it takes like three days to, to get back to normal. Yep. I was that way for three solid months, almost four months. It's going on five now, but I've been able to walk and do things now. But uh, it might take me a long time to recover. But I feel it. I'm feeling better every day. Getting stronger. I'm walking. I hadn't got up. I hadn't gained much distance. I'm probably up to a half a mile, a mile right now walking. I wasn't even doing a, a quarter. I'd walk and turn around and go back to the house. It'd be about a quarter of a mile. <laughs> so I'm up to about a half a mile there. All right, this one's getting pretty good. I'm going to take some of these little ridges out right here on it real quick. We're going to cut this phone off and stop this video. And, uh... I still hadn't got to go to a restaurant. My wife hadn't felt like it. Uh, we've had, we've just been busy, a lot of things going on. Uh, my uh, son-in-law, who buried my youngest daughter, lives in Georgia, Dalton Daddy. His daddy died Thursday. And it just, it just got us all sad. All I can say. I hate it for my daughter. I hate it for my grandkids. They loved him to death. They lived right. They lived like within three houses of him. Grew up with three houses of him. He took my grandson fishing all over Alaska and places like that. And, and uh, he's 76 years old, I think. But uh, he discovered about four weeks ago that he did that. Uh, he had some arteries that messed up real bad, and he had to have bypass. They couldn't do nothing 
Like a stench or something. They had to open him up, literally do bypass. He went down and did bypass surgery on him. And, uh, he did good. Come home, trying to get his strength back and all that, and he developed a blood clot, several of them in his lung. And what was so bad about it, he only had one lung. He had a lung removed when he was a teenager. They, they misdiagnosed him. They thought he had cancer when he was a teenager in his lungs, and removed the lung, and it wasn't cancer. So it went along. They did everything they could, but... We don't never know. We never know. The one I told about almost getting hypothermia duck up in that store, I can tell about ten more. The reason why I shouldn't have been here. Tell you one real quick. I was hand grabbing catfish in the lake. We were finding holes in the cypress tree. If there were two or three holes, we stopped. A couple of us were there and we put our feet in there so the fish couldn't get out. In the biggest hole, somebody would go down there and run their hand and then grab the fish and get him out. Well, there wasn't no holes in this tree but one. And, and I just couldn't get my hand in it before it went in it. And I felt the fish, so I put my foot over it come up and got some air and I told my partner I said there's a small catfish in here and I said it might take me a few minutes to get him I said I'm gonna hold my breath get a deep breath and I said and I went down and took me a while to get him and I'm going up and down like this in this hole with my arm right here and I finally grabbed him when I go to come out my hand won't come out and I let go of it, and my hand still won't come out. And I go down, and my hand won't come out. I go up, my hand won't come out. And I'm, I'm losing my breath, folks, I'm telling you. I put my feet on there. I'm pulling hide off my arm. My arm would not come out of there. And all of a sudden, I got to swallowing water. And I could hear bubbles. I don't know if the bubbles going down there, what it was, but I remember my ears hearing bubbles. And uh, I moved my hand to the perfect combination. And come out so easy, it wasn't even funny. That hole was about this big, but the rest of it, it wasn't like that. It was long and narrow, but it was a perfect place your arm to go in, but the rest of it, you go up and down, but you couldn't get it out. And I didn't know that. The water was murky, you couldn't see. And I just wasn't getting the right combination because I panicked. I just kept going so fast. I probably had it and passed it so many times and didn't give it a chance to work. And so, <clears throat> anyway, when I got, I wasn't 30 yards from the bank. We had a boat with us. We just paddled the boat along and go from tree to tree. And I held on the boat and my buddy paddled me to the bank. And I spit up water and coughed and spit up water. And uh, very close. I'd say probably if I hadn't got out of there when I did, another 10 or 15 seconds, I'd have had enough water in me. I'd have been gone. And they would have got out of there. And that's two of about 10 more like that. We're not going to share them today. What I'm trying to do here is I really messed up because of my accuracy. I caused a monster hen there to hit way too up that platform wasn't strong enough. I'm we'll gonna try to come here and take it out this way and then come across this way and get it out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. I'm almost a hundred percent sure. I can get it out indirect. And I 
got, look how much of it I got out. Now I'm gonna come up here and, and hit towards it. I explain to you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit down this way towards it. And grate it real good. I'm trying to work my way into it. I don't hit too deep up on it. That's what I wanted to hit. I hit here twice and there twice. <laughs> I missed my platform four times. Well, I finally got it. <laughs> the platform. I ain't got the hinge out yet. I finally hit what I wanted to. Took me long enough. And now we're going to have to... I'm going to thin the point right here. Thin as I can get it. Now I'm going to come right through here and try to get this head uh I just can't go get rock, and I can't be falling rock, just big rock, picking it up and hitting it with a big hammer, rock it way far over 20 pounds, and, uh, and I might not be able to continue to do this. I don't know. I couldn't do this for a long time, what I'm doing right now. But uh, I'm just not going to be in the traveling business and travel eight or ten hours and pick up a couple thousand pounds of rock. I'm not doing that no more. Dan Collins is who you need to see if you, for the stuff I had. He bought everything I had uh, except my personal stuff I'm working with around here. And I broke that in half because I hit too high up. That's a good one to quit on. I'll have a blessed day. And uh, I'm going to come back tomorrow if I can. And, I think this one I got real thin, and uh, then another one, and uh, get it real thin, and then we'll do indirect percussion uh, sometime more evening after church if I feel like it. And uh, anyway, <coughs> hope y'all have a blessed day, and I appreciate your prayer.